Hey golf people, you likely have a Netflix subscription, an Amazon Prime subscription. How about Hulu, Peacock, ESPN, maybe even some razors in there. But should you be subscribed to golf balls? We're gonna talk about that today as we look at a golf ball that has a subscription model option, the Seed SDX1. I'm gonna take you through my shots on course with this ball, tell you what I like and dislike about it, and talk about golf ball subscriptions and if it's worth it. Let's do it, guys. Now, they say the characteristics of this ball is it's going to be a low spinner. It's going to be soft in terms of compression and feel around the greens and it's gonna travel a long way. They say it's like a Pro V1. We're gonna put it to the test here on course. My first hole here is a par four. It's pretty straight away, kind of short. As long as I hit a good drive, we should be in wedge position. Let's do it. All right, so off the bat, that was a good shot. It went straight, it flew nice in the air. It didn't quite get to the peak height that I'm normally used to seeing, and that's just the characteristic of this ball. It's low spinning, and the flight is going to be a little bit lower as well. So if you're in a fast and firm condition, that could be a good thing. In terms of feel off the club with the SDX1, I would say it's somewhere in the medium range. It's not a super hard ball, and it's definitely not a softball like those Kirkland signatures. So kind of somewhere in between. We'll see how it does here. We should have a short iron in our hand. We'll see how it does around the green. Pretty good strike, just off to the left a little bit. And it looked like we got some good checkup, but of course I hit the fringe there. By the way, I'd love to know if you've ever tried a seed. This is my first time ever playing with a seed ball. So we're experiencing it for the first time together. But if you have already, I'd love to know down in the comments, what do you think of these things? Is it a ball that you would play or have you been playing it? What do you think? All right. Not gonna complain there with a par to start, guys. That was about what was expected with the chip. I had a little bit of run out. That's kind of what I was expecting from a little short shot like that. We will try to pinch one here in a little bit, maybe on the next hole. All right, we've got a pretty straightaway par four here once again, but this one's considerably longer, so we've gotta hit a really good drive to hopefully have better than a mid iron in our hand, maybe a seven or an eight, nine if we crush one. I'm gonna tee it up just a little bit higher and see if we can get a little more lift out of these things. Definitely got a lot better trajectory there, but I hung it out. That was just my swing. I hung it out to the right a little bit. It was drawn nicely, which is important when we talk about like dimple pattern and characteristics of ball flight. That had a nice tight little draw, which I like to see. It wasn't really overcooked or anything. So hopefully we're just gonna be over there in the rough. Let's go find out. This is the first company that I've ever come across that actually sells balls on a subscription basis. Now you can buy them a la carte for $35 per dozen on the website, but you can save a considerable amount of money, $8 per dozen or basically 75 cents a ball, give or take, if you were to go to a monthly plan. Now, is it worth it to get a ball subscription <laughs> I think it really depends on, first of all, how much golf you play. Now, some people, some people lose a dozen balls in a round. I've seen it happen <laughs> plenty of times, if not more. Those aren't weekly golfers. Once you become a person or a player that plays a couple of times a week, likely you're not gonna be losing that many golf balls out on the course. So obviously you have to take a look at your own play patterns as well as how many balls you lose per round to do the math. Here we are. I think I got hung up by a tree here, but a little bit longer than I want to have, but a good opportunity to learn about the characteristics of this golf ball. Here's a shot where I really need to hit a fade around this tree. It's 153. It's a little uphill. I'm going to go with seven iron, which is kind of a 160 club for me, but under these conditions and having to fade the ball, I'm definitely going to lose a little bit of distance. Let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, that's working nicely. Is it the club though? Oh, came up a little bit short there. Just a little bit short. Now I looked around the internet and I found that TaylorMade is also offering golf ball subscriptions now, which I found interesting. Although it didn't seem like they were giving it much marketing presence 
or much of a push. And I didn't even see if you could get a discount by getting those tailor-made balls on subscription. I think it's more of a convenience thing. There were a couple others that I found, but no company of really any clout or standing or anyone I had really ever heard of that is doing this. So it's a really interesting concept, but I'm almost of the mindset that the reason no one's doing it well is probably because maybe it's just not a wonderful idea because Again, for the people who are gonna lose a lot of balls, those folks aren't playing golf that often. They're playing once a month, every few months in their local charity tournament. For the guys that are playing consistently, they're not losing a lot of golf balls. And so do they need a subscription? So I'm not sure if there's a market for it or not, but I'd love to get your thoughts down below. And would you consider getting 12 balls a month, 24 balls a month? What would be the number for you that you use per month? And would you get a subscription? I really would love to know. All right, I'm a little short here. Again, we're gonna see if we can ship one close. I like these ones. Well guys, I gotta say, I love it when a ball does exactly what I expect it to do. And certainly the X1 did that right there. What I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna go up to the green, place this camera. We're gonna hit a few shots from about a hundred yards here, just to see how it sticks and stops with a wedge in our hand. Wow, from what I could see back there, and now looking at the results, that was pretty darn good, guys. What do you think? This was my first shot here, like two, three, four, and fifth shot here, really dialing that one in. From what I could tell, the spin looked great there. That last one was about two feet, maybe even less. Gotta say, guys, very impressed there with the feel with a wedge shot. All right, last test here is I am going to take my Gamer Balls, which right now are the Encore Vero X1, and we're gonna test them head to head here in terms of distance off the tee with these X1s from Seed. Let's see who comes out on top. We'll be measuring it with my Garmin device here, and we'll see exactly how far we hit them. First up's an Encore. All right, we had club head speed 94, ball speed 136, smash 1.43, estimated carry and roll 231, but we'll find out exactly where that was. Next up's the seed. Club head speed 95, ball speed 138, smash 1.45, SMA carry and roll 237. We'll do another encore now. Club head speed 94, ball speed 132, smash 1.39, SMA carry and roll 220. I didn't quite catch that one. We're gonna go seed again. Okay, now that was similar to the second shot as well. Club head speed 93, ball speed 131, smash 1.4, SMA carry and roll 219. Let's go find out where these balls were. We'll measure it here on the G80. Here we go, 224. That's our first seed right there, guys. A little left of target. More so the swing than the ball itself. As we march basically directly across this was the first Encore, which had about another one mile per hour swing on it. But look at that, it didn't go quite as far. 220, that is the Encore. Now we've got two balls up here, guys, really right next to each other. And these swings were fairly similar, I would say. Over here, dead center. 232, that's our encore. That was the second swing we took, I believe. 232. Our second swing with the seed. Just a little less, but not by much. 229, now the mile per hour was down a little bit there. Again, perfect position. Well guys, distance wise, I gotta say they were pretty even from what I can tell. My swing speeds were around the same tempo 
around the same club speed, around the same smash factor, and the balls were around the same spots. That tells me this is a pretty darn good ball. It's definitely going to compete with the premium balls out there, and the price is certainly a heck of a lot better than a Pro V1. Now, if you can figure out a way to make the subscription work for you, I do like the $27 price a whole heck of a lot more than $35, but even at $35, pretty good value right there. And it's even a little less money than the balls that I'm currently playing. So you gotta love that. Now, I would love to try another ball in their range. Let me quickly show you the balls that are available from Seed, as well as the characteristics of each of these balls. Here you have the different options available for Seed. You've got the SD15, they call it the Country Mile. I assume that is a long ball. It's got a Serlin cover, it's two-piece, 355 dimples, lower launch angle, higher trajectory, lower compression, and it plays like a super soft. The SD01 is the Pro One. It's kind of the ball that came before this one that I'm playing now, the X1. It is more of a hard feeler. It hits and spins. The short game spin is high. The durability is two plus rounds. If I could ever get a ball to go even one round, I'm always happy, so never mind two. That's plenty. All the rest of these are cast urethane, by the way, including this one, which is three-piece ball now. 336 dimples, tour launch, tour trajectory, tour compression, and it's kind of like a Pro V1X, they say. You've got the SDO2, which is... Again, very similar, although it's got maximum spin. This is now a four-piece ball. It's going to have a low launch angle, flat trajectory, and torque compression like a Pro V1X or TP5X. That's not gonna be the ball for me, for sure. You've got the SD05, which is like a Pro Soft. It has high spin. It's also a three-piece with 332 dimples. A little higher trajectory, and I bet that would be a pretty good ball for me. It's got also a higher launch angle and the compression is low. I like that it says hit and spin. The Pro X1 here is the ball I'm playing today, their newest ball. It's soft feeling, they say. I think I would call it medium, but they're calling it soft. Short game spin is high. We saw that out there, the spin looked very good. You've got a three-piece construction, 332 dimples, lower launch angle. So again, that's the difference there, higher versus lower. That's why I think the five might be a better ball for me. It's got flatter trajectory and it's got tour compression, whereas the O5 has low compression. They're saying this is closest to a Pro V1 or TP5. All right, I like this ball a lot. I'd love to try that O5 for sure. And who knows, maybe even the Country Mile, <laughs> even though it's a Serlin. I'd like to try that one just to see if it does go a country mile in fact. Is it worth getting a subscription? I think you've got to make that decision for yourself. I don't think for me it would be worth it, but maybe for you in the convenience it could be. Still, even at 35 a dozen, I think these are really solid performers, certainly on par with some of the premium balls out there on the market at a much better price than the big dogs. I highly recommend you do give the seed balls a shot. I think it's worth it. Take a look at those characteristics and pick a ball that's right for you and see what you think. I think they're pretty darn good. I'll leave a link down below in the description, guys. Make sure to hit subscribe because we are doing a lot more ball reviews and a lot more equipment reviews here all throughout the summer and beyond. I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.